Kirkland Carne is sponsored by Boost Mobile. And right now, you should get in on this. Four lines, 25 bucks per line, unlimited gigs. It is the ultimate family plan, and it's all running on the nationwide Sprint 4G LTE network. I got to say, I was on BoostMobile.com earlier today. The Galaxy S8, that's exactly the phone I use. I love this phone. They're selling it for 500 bucks, which is a steal. This is the latest Samsung Galaxy phone, 500 bucks. They have so much going on, and my phone never lets me down. The service never lets me down. Unlimited, get in on this. Okay, so we are at Real Urban Barbecue in Skokie. I have restaurateur, barbecue genius, all-around good guy, Jeff Shapiro, sitting next to me. Are you ready to go? Ready to go. Thanks for having me. It's Car Con Carne. Let's eat in the car. It's Car Con Carne. So it is the world's only food podcast recorded in a car. I'm James Van Ostel. Jeff Shapiro is here. Real Urban Barbecue is in Skokie. Where else is it? We've got a store. Our original store is in Highland Park. And then we followed up with a store in Vernon Hills and uh, Oak Brook. And now we're in Skokie. And, you know, it's funny because we've renamed them. Everybody said, oh, you know, how can you go into predominantly Jewish area and sell pork. And, you know, <laughs> after a couple weeks open, we renamed it the Highland Pork, Illinois. <laughs> so, I mean, it was just crazy. Lines out the door just trying to come in and eat the pulled pork. So it was a lot of fun. And then we went into Vernon Hills, and we were like, okay, what can we name that store? We ended up naming it Vernon Hogs, Illinois. Sure. And then we did Smoke Brook, Illinois. Naturally, right. And now we're in Smoky, Illinois <laughs> at Skokie at our new store. So we've got to be careful on where we go and how we name them. Well, and that, that's a question I wanted to ask you. And this new restaurant, we'll, we'll talk about this. It's spectacular. As far as the vetting process or the scouting process to open up a new location, I mean, it's a big deal to invest the money and time and energy into a new location. There's a lot of process behind that. Skokie is an interesting community. I mean, when I was growing up in Skokie, it was a predominantly Jewish area, and now it is very much this pan-cultural landscape. Agreed. It's very, uh, very ethnic here. There's no question about it. So as a restaurateur, as someone who runs Real Urban Barbecue, why Skokie? Well, you know, first of all, we, we did a lot of comparative analysis as far as the numbers are concerned. And when I say the numbers, how many cars, how many people, how many daytime workers, how many households, what's the average income? And now because we've got so much historical data with three other restaurants, mm -hmm. this became a very interesting and strong, you know, corridor for us. You know, um, when we were meeting with some of the... Um, Oh, you know, the real estate geniuses and stuff. And we found out that this Chili's is one of the highest volume Chili's. And this corner bakery is one of the highest corner, highest mm -hmm. volume corner bakeries. And Panda Express, and it just goes on and on. You know, this Buffalo Wild Wings is the largest or highest volume in the state of Illinois. So, you know, we knew that we were coming here. There's 50,000 cars that go through here a well, day. Yeah, we're, we're on Tui Avenue. This this street is never not busy. I forgive the double negative. It's never not busy. Yeah, you, you can't get down the streets. Right. You know? And it's right off the Eden. So location-wise, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. I mean, and, you know, look at where you're in between. I mean, you, you've got Niles, Morton Grove, Skokie. You know, or Lake, even Edgebrook, Saganash. I mean, oh, all those. You know, you know, one mile away, you're in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, I think you're getting a, a, a better mix here than a lot of other, you know, suburbs that we're in. So I mean, it, it was a, it was a really it was a great opportunity. No barbecue really in the area other than Elwoods, which is you know an a lettuce and it's more of a, a supper club concept. Yeah. But here's the funny thing: um, I used to run Bones. For oh my God! Bones Restaurant, right? It was there before Elwood's on Lincoln Avenue, and it used to be the Kenilworth Inn before that. So I mean, it's got a long history. But you know, I was smoking over there 25 years ago, and here I'm back in kind of the neighborhood where you know I started almost like my barbecue career years ago. So it's very cool. All right. So the address of the new location in Skokie is 5238 Tui. Excellent. And like I said, it is like a block and a half west of the Edens. Super accessible. I live in the area, and I had been going to the Highland Park location. It was the closest one to where I live. When I found out, I went to, every year I host this event called the Backlot Bash in Skokie. They've got a bunch of bands, Soul Asylums playing this year. But I remember Real Urban Barbecue was at the Backlot Bash in Skokie, and there was a sign there 
saying, coming soon to Skokie. And I flipped out. I think I went on Twitter right away and said something, and I got an immediate response like, yes, we're coming. It's true. 2017. Well, you know, and that was it. You know, we knew that we were coming. We had already signed the lease at that point in time. So, you know, what we actually did is we went out there, and I think we did like dollar mini sandwiches just to kind of get the product out, kiss some babies, shake them some hands, you know, and learn who our new customer is going to be and what a great opportunity. We love the backyard, backyard back, back bash, bash yeah. and we're going to be participating again this year. Excellent. And, you know, I think it's a good opportunity to go out and meet people and, you know, show your product off. So it was real exciting for us. And I want to keep talking. I also want to eat because I, 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 this food that you brought into the car should not get cold. Uh, let's we'll talk more about history and we'll talk barbecue stuff. Uh, but we should talk about the food that's right in front of us while sure. it's hot. So you just you just loaded up a bunch of trays with food. Correct. And you know I, I brought some of my favorite items, and hopefully they'll be your favorite items as well. Um, burnt ends. We were one of the first guys to bring burnt ends into the city of Chicago seven years ago. A burnt end is what we do is we take the deckle, which is the point part of the brisket, and we remove it, and what we do is we re-season it, we smoke it again, and primarily what the what the deckle is, it's a real fatty piece of brisket, and what happens is during that second smoking process, all of the fat kind of renders out, and you're left with just this meat candy, <laughs> and it's a cubed chunk of brisket that you know has a little bit of bark on it and i mean it's just unbelievable should, should I try it right yeah, now yeah you got to try it i think i'll actually join you on one of those because they look too yummy uh-huh it's very soft it's tender mm-hmm. it's sweet oh come on i'm gonna get it all over your car but you wouldn't be the first you know it's it's kind of what made us famous and people will come in it's definitely go, sweet it's definitely wow People will come into the restaurant and say, oh, I'm here for your burnt ends. Oh, they won't be ready for an hour. Okay, we'll see you in an hour, <laughs> you know, because we've created that type of demand. Right, we're splitting the roll of paper towels we brought in here. Oh, Jeff, that's ridiculous. I could eat that all day. It's a great product. It's a I'm great not, product. I'm not done with that, but all right, let's talk and about you, and, and you know what? You don't even need barbecue sauce with it because it's got such a great coating. Well, and, and that, that to me, that's the secret to good barbecue. I mean, get it without the sauce and use the sauce on the there, side. There's no question about it. All right, so you got some ribs in here. How do you do your ribs? So the ribs are actually, we're doing baby back today. We started off, what was interesting is we started off with St. Louis ribs and baby backs on the menu seven years ago, and we mm-hmm. just recently took the St. Louis ribs off. The St. Louis ribs, in my opinion, is a better rib, but Chicago is a baby back mm-hmm. town. For every 10 slabs of baby backs that we were selling, we only sold one St. Louis. And we're going to, you know, we couldn't keep them fresh. We couldn't keep them to the point where we wanted to serve them without people getting, you know, the freshest product possible. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we took off the St. Louis, we run them as specials, and now we are strictly baby back. And in this location, we've been doing a ton of beef ribs almost on a daily basis at the new store here in Skokie. So I want to try the rib, but while I still have the taste of burnt ends in my mouth, like what's in that rub? What is that sweetness? Turbinado sugar. It's a mixture of turbinado sugar, brown sugar, and, you know, and about 13 other ingredients. And um, what happens is with the turbinado sugar and that long cooking process, it melts into the meat and it just creates that bark that you're looking for, which is that real darkness on the meat and stuff and gives it that really nice mahogany color and it, it really it works out well and a lot of you know barbecue guys will use that different amount of sugar in their recipes. That is magnificent. All right, I'm going to try a rib. Now, so you're just going to watch me eat, aren't you? All right, I'll join you. I can't say no. I know you and, and if you look at it, I mean, it's got a nice pink hue to it and stuff. And, I mean, you know, you should have a smoke ring on it. Our mm-hmm. baby backs are two-pound slabs. Um, you know, it's a it's a long cooking process. We start them off for about three hours. And then what we do is we create, like, a tinfoil pouch. And we put butter and brown sugar and <laughs> apple juice and then you know, all this goodness into a pouch and a little bit of honey, and we wrap them for about an hour. And what happens is all that sweetness melts right into the rib. Yep, I'm tasting that right now. And, you know, we knew that coming on to the North Shore, especially of Chicago, Mm -hmm. we know that they're baby back lovers, but we also know that they love sweet barbecue. So that was kind of the whole idea behind the ribs. Oh, this is really, really tasty. Oh, my goodness. And they're they're very meaty. You Mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's a great rib. Um... 
we're using local product here in Chicago from a company called Wichita Meatpacking Company. Mm -hmm. They do a great job. And oh, this is so good. We're we're not afraid to you know try to get the best product available. You know where some people will cut the corners and they'll try to buy you know the generic rib and stuff. We really go all out and try to source the best products available. And look at this, nothing but bone left. There, As it should be. All, all the meat is in my mouth on its way to my tummy. Uh, this is great. Oh, my God. When did you first discover you loved barbecue? Because well, it, it's got to be, it, it reached an obsessive point at some point for you to turn it into a restaurant chain. Well, you know, it's interesting. Out of college, I hooked up with Bennigan's, and Bennigan's was really big up here. I'm sure you mm-hmm. remember it growing oh, of up. Of course. And I graduated college, and I started off at the Evanston store, and then they sent me out to the O'Hare store. From there, I ended up being in Kansas City. And we're talking, oh, okay. in the, we're talking in the mid-'80s, and I ended up in the barbecue capital of the world. Right. You know, and... My fascination with barbecue started, and, you know, I was always a backyard enthusiast, but as I started to mature and my palate got better and I spent, you know, many, many years working for Lettuce Entertain You, you know, I started doing a little bit of barbecue competitions, and all of a sudden I started winning some trophies and started taking home a lot of awards, and I knew I had mastered my barbecue flavor profiles Mm -hmm. and um you know it was time after all those years to kind of branch off and do it on our own you know we we, uh filmed something inside on uh, facebook live which is on the carcon carne youtube now but you showed this row of pictures uh, pictures you've taken of all these different barbecue places you've been to really famous ones like rendezvous do you still what's the word i'm looking for do you still study barbecue are you you still a student like looking to learn new things no question about it you know it's an ongoing process and you know not that we can do it any differently because at the end of the day we're smoking product and everybody's smoking product but you know it might be a a, taking little nuggets away from each restaurant you visit and i think you know that's more of what i'm looking for when we go to a new town i'll always map out what's going to be the best barbecue and we'll at least hit one or two of them the wife might protest a little bit sometimes (laughs) i got to go off by myself I'm sure the wife's like, oh, great, barbecue. Yeah, well, <laughs> they, they, they get real excited. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's part of my makeup, you yeah. know. And, I mean, I've probably eaten at, you know, hundreds of different barbecue restaurants. And before I opened up Real Urban Barbecue, I took almost a year off and I traveled the country. And I must have eaten it, you know, five to ten in every state, you know what I mean, just traveling everywhere. So it helped me master my craft. Right on. Okay, so what else we have here? The ribs are so... It, it, this is really like Christmas because every gift is really wonderful. Oh, we've got, I just grabbed um, sausage and is that turkey? Yeah, our turkey, I mean, is like, you know, it's like the, the hidden gem. You know, people come into our restaurant and say, hey, I'm not a big fan of turkey. And when they try our turkey, they're hooked forever. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Tur- turkey is not a very sexy meat. It's not known for being wildly no, rich or flavorful. I, but ours is brined and we brine it for 24 hours and we get in... You know, smaller, you know, four-pound boneless breasts, and, you know, they're all sized almost the same mm-hmm. way. And we've really, I mean, that's one of the, the, I'm telling you, one of the best items on the menu. On Thanksgiving, we will sell thousands of pounds of turkey. I mean, we took probably the slowest day in the restaurant business and turned For it real? into the busiest day in the restaurant business. I mean, it's, it's just, it's crazy. All right, should I be uh, using, using some sauce on the side for some of this stuff? You know... What do you recommend? I know you also have some pork in here, too. Yeah, so I would recommend for the um, for the turkey just dipping it in our original sauce. I can't okay. really see what you got going on in there. Okay. But I know we cut the pieces in half. Just dip a little corner of it, mm-hmm. you know, into the original sauce. And, I mean, it's it's just a great meat. We've... We've done well. I mm-hmm. mean, this is this is great, and I mean, it's very lean. It's, mm-hmm. All of our meats are gluten free, which is a big thing right now. Even if you take a look at the barbecue sauce, you know, you'll see a lot of black specks in there. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of the um, the black pepper. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean? We take a lot of pride into the ingredients we use, and it's got to be a certain cracked black pepper. And we make about 150 gallons of barbecue sauce a day. I mean, just oh boy, those amounts. All right, the turkey is delicious. It is flavorful. And the sauce is very sweet. I know you have a couple sauces here. Mm-hmm. So this is, this be like a, a ketchup-based sauce? Or? It is a ketchup-based sauce. And, um, you know, it's funny. We were out trying to 
find somebody to make it for us. And, you know, a lot of these manufacturers these days have proprietary ketchup. Hmm. And they, won't, they tried to make our barbecue sauce, and they couldn't get it down for the acidity levels and the viscosity because they all want to use a cheaper product. And once mm-hmm. again, we weren't going to compromise our product by going to an inferior product. So very quality-driven. Is it wrong to just want to drink the barbecue sauce? You know what? i got a <laughs> straw with me if you'd like. <laughs> All right. Uh, tell me about the sausage. Is it spicy? In my opinion, no. <laughs> um, I think everybody's got their own tolerance. Mm-hmm. It's a smoked andouille sausage. It's got a great, a great bite to it. It's got a nice snap to it. Um, oh, I wish you could hear that snap on Mike. That is a legit snap. I mean, it's it's a great product, and once mm-hmm. again, tons of pepper and pork, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's got all of these great ingredients in here, and I mean, it's a wonderful product. There's definitely some heat here. Now, I've had your pickles before. Those are we, hot. We call them brain buster pickles. Mm-hmm. Those are face melting. They're always surprising. Well, what's funny is a lot of the um, kids will come in with their mom and dads, and, you know, kids love pickles, and they go right. grab the pickles, <laughs> and they put them in their mouth, and they do a beeline right to the garbage can. You know what I mean? And it's, you know, it's one of those sometimes funny uh, situations that transpires in the restaurant on a daily basis. Yeah, there's definitely some heat here. It's not too spicy. It's just, it's all flavor. It's so good. It's, it's, it's a great product. Oh, my gosh. All right, so if you were to do a sauce with the uh, sausage, what would you use? The same? Unless you want to, you know, double heat it, you know, I, I, this is one of my favorite sauces. This is our Texas sauce, cumin, dark chili powder, a um, little red chili flake in there. It's mm-hmm. a bolder type of sauce. Yeah, it is. You know, it's not going to blow your socks off, and people say, oh, is it spicy? It's more of like a New Mexico, like a Southwest flavor profile, at least in, mm-hmm. you know, in my flavor sense. Oh, yeah, I dig it. Oh, this is, all, this is also good. All right, so we should try the pork, too. Correct. The pork, um, we're using all natural boneless uh, pork shoulders, and uh, the pork, yeah, the pork shoulders themselves are averaging about eight pounds, and we're going through, you know, just hundreds, you know, a, a week, a day, you know, between all four stores. Mm-hmm. You know, out of all the barbecue guys in the city of Chicago. We're up there, if not probably the highest volume brisket consumption, you know, barbecue chain out there. We're averaging almost 12,000 pounds of brisket a week between our restaurants. So it's some big volume, and, you know, um, we do it well. So how does it work with, with cooking and smoking all this stuff? Do you have people working around the clock monitoring, like, when these things come on and off? You know, it's interesting that you say that because, you know, we're, we're using a little bit different technology for cooking our our pork, brisket, Mm -hmm. turkey, ribs, sausage, whatever you may have here. And when I say different technology, we're using pellet cookers. And commercially in the city of Chicago, nobody else was using it when I started it, you know, seven years ago. It was even unheard of. And what I mean by a pellet cooker, what they do is when they're cutting wood, there's sawdust. And the sawdust is actually formed into pellets. And it's got a you know, sugar binding agent, which is, you know, good for food service, obviously. And what happens is you take these big bags of pellets and you drop them into a hopper in behind the smokers. And it actually goes into an auger and they drop into the smoker into a firebox. So the firebox creates a smoke and then it's a convection fan that blows it throughout these big rotating ovens. We have the ability, and I mean, you know, go to my Vernon Hill store, on a certain night, we might be putting out 3,600 pounds of meat a day there, and we're running out of product. And, I mean, it's just crazy. But here's why I pick and chose the pellet cookers. And you talked about learning your craft and going out and, you know, discovering what I was doing for barbecue. The machines are actually built in Ponca City, Oklahoma. I went down there for a week, went to the factory, and learned how to take them apart and build them and learned how to smoke on them and did trial runs and worked with the owners and stuff. And now we've got many, many smokers from this particular company. And the company's called Cook Shack. 
And they've been very supportive. When we opened up the Skokie store, we were having problems. They flew out here immediately to come and support us, which is great. You know, and I mean, you should expect that, you know, out of one of your purveyors. Of course, but, but I will say customer service across the board is a dying art. So it's nice to see. Yeah, you know, and I mean, hey, listen, you know, we're, we're spending, you know, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a cooker. You know, they want to come out here and support uh-huh. it and make sure it's right. Yeah. But getting back to why we do it with these pellet cookers, so you can actually dial it in to a specific temperature. So you can set the thing at, say for instance, we're cooking right now all of our meat at 180 degrees for the first six hours, and then in the middle of the night, there's nobody there, it ramps up to 250 degrees, and it finishes the cooking process. So we're cooking in all the restaurants, overnight, every night, fresh product on a daily basis. We don't want to carry food over. We don't yeah. want to try to rehydrate it. We don't want to try to bring it back the next day. Because your customers we will serve know. It. Well, you know, and that's funny. They will know, and that's why we said, or I said, when we were going to do this, in the morning we come in, we take an inventory of what we have, we make the brisket, well, we make the brisket and the pork overnight, but we actually make the ribs, the turkey, and the chicken, and the sausage in the morning, and then we do it again after lunch, and we make it again fresh for dinner. So we're actually cooking them twice a day. So if you come in for lunch, you're getting them right out of the smoker. And if you come in for dinner, you're getting it right out of the smoker. So the merry-go-round never stops. Never stops. <laughs> but So getting back to these pellets that we're using. So it's the pellets is it's a renewable fuel source. We're taking a byproduct of wood, so we're kind of doing the green smoking thing. Mm -hmm. Out of every 40-pound bag of these pellets, we're only getting eight ounces of ash. So the cleanup is really easy. So now, if you're taking a look at now going to the wood portion of it, and a lot of the guys are using wood, Mm -hmm. big logs, the logs, no two logs are going to be the same. They come in different weights, different sizes, different ages, different greenness. Some are wet, some are dry. There's so many different varieties variables these pellets are the same every time so that's part of the consistency and you need consistency and, and the foundation of my company so this way if you're going into the oakbrook store or the vernon hill store or whatever it is you're going to get that same product because we're cooking it the same exact way with mm-hmm. the same pellet the restaurant business has been your life i'm sure there have been highs i'm sure there have been lows was there ever a point where you said this business is just too much for me i can't do this anymore you know it's, even when I'm interviewing new potential employees, we can teach people the technicals part of the job. But if they don't have those innate characteristics that's built in right here, they're never going to make it. And I'm, good for me, I've never lost that love for it. And, you know, yeah, you got bad days, and I've had bad days before. But at the end of the day, I love going to work every day, and I enjoy what I do. And that's part of the love and the passion for what drives me to keep opening more restaurants and to try to keep delivering a better product on a daily basis and making sure that we can give our guests the best experience that we know how to. You know, I, I mentioned customer service. I, I had Hot Dog on the show a couple of weeks ago, and talking about the importance of just communicating with the customers. I walked into Real Urban Barbecue in Skokie tonight to meet with you. You were chatting up with the customer. Well, you know, but that's what it is. I mean, mm-hmm. people want to come in and see the guy. You know, yeah. it's, it's funny. There's a gentleman staying. We just happened to be next to a Holiday Inn, mm-hmm. and I know that you used to uh, take advantage of some of their services as a kid. <laughs> when I was in high school, we used to sneak in to the Holodome on Tui Avenue, and uh, we'd use their pool. But, you know, I mean, think about it. We're here, as we talked about, on Tui Avenue. we got a 260-room hotel next to us. So, you know, getting back to why did I pick this space, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's right there for you. Bus loads of kids, bus loads of people, yeah. and they're coming through the doors. But a gentleman came in today, and they're launching a new clothing product here in the Chicago market. He's in Indianapolis, and he lives there. That's his, where he lives. Mm-hmm. Came in, and he wanted to take a picture with me. And, you know, it's flattering. You know, I'm not a celebrity, but, you know, in the barbecue sense, people want to see the guy. You yeah. Know, I mean, they want to talk the talk. They want to walk the walk because in today's society, everybody's got a smoker or lots of people have smokers in their backyard. And I mean, they're showing it more on the food network. They're showing competitions. You see it in all the grocery stores, mm-hmm. everywhere you go. So what's really cool about it is this guy did his homework. He said, hey, I came in last night for dinner. I'm back for lunch. And he goes, you're the guy, right? And I said, yeah. He goes, do you mind? Can we take some pictures together? And, you know, he's putting it up on his Facebook and his Twitter feed. And, you know, it's, it's flattering. But. But, you know, you talk about 
wanting to meet people and being in your restaurant, you know, this is my livelihood. I need mm-hmm. to be here on a daily basis. This is, where, this is where it starts and this is where it ends. Is it harder for you as you keep expanding to spread your seed, for lack of a better way to say yeah, it? Yeah, you know, I mean, right now I'm living in the Skokie store. I mean, this mm-hmm. is my new baby. And, you know, people say, oh, my God, you're here, you know. And I'm like, it's like having a new child, yeah. you know, and the child is still crawling right now. Thank God some of the other stores are running, some are walking. But, you know, I need to spread out my time and still make those visits on a daily basis, if not weekly basis, to the other stores. So, you know, summer's a real tough time for us because we're doing a lot of summer festivals Mm -hmm. and we're doing weddings and we're doing backyard barbecues. So, you know, we've got a great team of folks that works for us. A lot of them have been with us since the day we opened. A lot of them worked for me when I was back with other restaurant companies. So, you know, we've got a real dedicated group of folks and, you know, thank God they're watching my butt and making sure that we're, you know, delivering that product on a daily basis. I was thinking, I interviewed Barry Sorkin of Smoke a long time ago, and he he has the strangest location for his restaurant. He's very successful there. Mm -hmm. But he identified an area that had a need. And I think that's what you did with Skokie. There was nothing like this. I've said before, I this town has needed a couple of strong anchors like Real Urban Barbecue. I, I think it's critical to the, the village's financial success is to have a couple of those people just realizing the potential and seeing it's an untapped area. Well, you know, I mean, Skokie's doing it right. You know, they're attracting some major retailers. And, I mean, you know, look at what's down this corridor here. And, you know, there was an article just written about Real Urban Barbecue being in the village. And, you know, they mentioned us in the same uh, articles as Walmart and, Mm -hmm. you know, Target and Real Urban Barbecue. So, I mean, it's nice to have that type of recognition to, you know, a village is so happy to have us, you know, yeah. you know, now with four stores, we're getting calls from municipalities saying, Hey, will you open up one here? Will you open up one here? So, you know, not all of them will be the right fit for real urban barbecue because as you see, and as you know, from being a resident here, you've got that great mix of corporate. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of residents here. You've got businesses here. You need that mix in order to make it work. Cause without it, you're just not going to be able to do it. One thing I love about Real Urban Barbecue, one of the things that keeps me coming back is your sides. We're, we're talking, and I'm looking at all these containers of sides you brought in here. Um, the Brussels sprouts are always a favorite of mine. This is how you get me to eat my vegetables. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Oh, can I get I, one of the setups? Yeah, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't think the Brussels sprouts were going to take off the way they did. You know, and I mean, we're Well, that was my next question. Do people... Hundreds and hundreds of cases... We actually, uh, they're coming in sized for us, believe it or not. So once again, we can deliver that consistency product. But I mean, let's before, face it, I, before I dig in, do you want some? I don't want to. Not a big Brussels sprout guy. Okay. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, I'll pick out the bacon and, you know, <laughs> uh, and uh, lick the uh, maple syrup that's in there. Uh-huh. But, you know, the Brussels sprouts are roasted on sheet pans. We drizzle maple syrup on there, a little salt and pepper, and bacon, you know, and it's an apple wood smoked bacon. So, I mean, at the end this of the day. This is totally a I, cheating way to do vegetables. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not the biggest green eater in the world, you know what I mean? And people make Shocked. fun of me. But, you know, I'm a Chicago guy. I'm mm-hmm. potatoes. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we, we sell just hundreds and hundreds of cases of Brussels sprouts. And it became a really great item for us. You know, other things that we're known for is we've got our sweet potato souffle, which mm-hmm. we'll dive into here. We do homemade baked beans. And once again, you know, consistency is the number one thing. And, you know, when you said, you know, being a restaurateur and stuff, you know, a lot of the stuff I've learned as I've grown, you know, mm-hmm. I, I started accumulating tons of barbecue smokers and catering equipment and all this stuff. So I'm driving through Buffalo Grove close to the Vernon Hill store and I'm looking for garages to start storing the products in. And I came across a business center and it was Arthur Rogers Business Park. And I, I met with the agent and I said, I need a garage to store all my barbecue stuff. And I said, by any chance you got something with a kitchen? And he goes, oh my God, do I got the spot for you? So he brought me into a facility that was built by Smithfield Pork, which is the largest pork producer in the country, and it was a test kitchen for McDonald's. So we get into this location, and it's got walk-in refrigerators, it's got the hood system in there, it's got all these great toys that you could almost put a full-service catering company or restaurant in, Mm -hmm. and it's in the middle of a business park. So what we ended up doing is we ended up 
building a commissary. So now, for instance, like the baked beans. These baked beans are made in 60... Oh, there's a plate for me. 60-gallon kettles, <laughs> okay? And, you know... Wait, all this time, I, I should have been using a plate. <laughs> Here, I'll hold it for you. You got your setup still? Uh, yeah, hang on. This whole time, I, I, sh- I should have been eating like an adult. Once again, you'll see the bacon come alive Oh, here, yes, yes, you know. yes, yes. But, you know, the neat thing about what we are doing with this is is that we are making all the baked beans, we're making all the barbecue sauce, we're making the soups, the salad dressings, and all the baked goods at one central location. We've got refrigerated trucks, and we, fly, we drive them out to the stores every day. So we can maintain that level. I mean, it's the foundation, again, of the restaurants because this way, if you go to my Vernon Hill store and you say, oh, I was over in Oak Brook, and your baked beans were better over there, it's impossible. Right. It's impossible. Oh, they're all they're all made at the same thing. These are a little bit more unique because they've got butter beans in them, I was kidney say the, beans. There are three different beans in here, right? Yeah. Uh, kidney beans, uh, baked beans, and butter beans. Very cool. And, you mm-hmm. know, we're putting our rub in there. We're putting a little bit of our barbecue sauce in there. We're putting bacon in there. Is this the sugar. first the first sauce I tried in there? Yes. Okay. It's sweet. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, once again, it's all about sweet barbecue. Well, these are ridiculous. People go nuts for them. Because it's definitely sweet. After you let it sit for a second, you get a little bit of the heat. A little bit of the heat. Yep. It's, we're doing its job. So, <laughs> you know, but I mean, uh, you know, getting back to that commissary, we wouldn't be able to deliver the product each day without having that foundation for us. Sure. And, you know, I didn't know what I was doing when we got there. So, you know, now I think we've got some systems in place and it works well for us. And, you know, once again, it's all about the guest experience and making sure that we've got that really fresh, consistent product. I, I love the... Uh seasonal sauces you do we were talking before we started recording uh in november you did a pumpkin sauce yeah you know we'll we'll take advantage of for instance if it's vidalia onion season we will smoke vidalia onions and blend it into our barbecue sauce if it's uh you know national garlic month or something we'll go out and get all the (laughs) elephant ears we'll smoke the garlic and we'll blend that in there you'll smoke the garlic oh it's unbelievable Unbelievable. I bet that smells amazing. It's unbelievable. <laughs> well, we're doing it in Port and Clinton Square up in Highland Park. I mean, all the, you know, people are running over. I mean, it, it works out really well. You know, we've done the same thing with apples. You know, when the Ooh, apples are yeah. really fresh and, you know, they're they're ripe for picking, we'll take the Granny Smith apples and we'll put them out on the smoker. We'll smoke them, blend it into the barbecue sauce. So, I mean, it's all fresh ingredients. It's great stuff. The beans are magnificent. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. So we also got some sweet potatoes. Which I love. I'm glad that I'm eating these towards the end because otherwise I would have no room for anything else. Well, we also got a little coleslaw, so I don't know if you want to clean your palate um, with the coleslaw before you dive into that sweetness at the end here. So coleslaw is a must for barbecue. You know what? We forgot about the pork. Oh, okay. Well, I've got a plate now. I wanted you to try this Piedmont sauce. That we've right, what, got is, here. what is Piedmont sauce? It's a vinegar based sauce. You'll find okay. it mostly in the Carolinas. And what I like about it is it's, it's a liquid. And when you pour it over the pork, the pork is kind of dense, you know, mm-hmm. but it's also a little eerie. So what happens is with this barbecue sauce, the vinegar, you don't have to pour a lot on there, mm-hmm. a lot goes a long way. But it will fill in all the nooks and crannies and almost kind of rehydrate the pork, if that, for Got lack it. of better words. Mm-hmm. And it really helps bring the product to life. You know, it's probably my favorite barbecue sauce in the restaurant. And once again, it's a sleeper that not a lot of people go after. But, I mean, it Because really, it is very thin. It, it, yeah, it's a liquid. It's an apple mm-hmm. cider bar- uh, mm-hmm. vinegar, mm-hmm. you know, that we blend in with seasoning and some spices and some sauces and... You know, we create this great liquid barbecue sauce, and it's very fluid. Mm-hmm. Oh, it really does taste great with the pork. And I'm seeing... So, are the, this isn't smoke ring. Is this bark I'm looking at, like the, the pink parts of the pork? No, that's part of the pink smoke ring. Oh, this is so cool. This is delicious. It's good stuff, you know what I mean? We're selling just, you know, tons of pulled pork, and, you know, it's it's definitely one of the highlights of the restaurant. I just got a big bite full with the Piedmont. Isn't it kind good? of soaking in, just yeah. yeah. I mean, it just really, like I said, it almost rehydrates it and mm-hmm. kind of it makes it, you know, it kind of gives it that wet feeling. So I know a lot of the, the stuff we're eating right now, well, these are staples um, at the other locations, but you expanded the menu here. 
you, you know, you, you, you took some chances. You're doing like breakfast food here. Yeah, we're doing breakfast and we're doing beef ribs. You know, um, mm-hmm. we knew coming into this area that beef ribs were big. You know, I've eaten down at Elwood's quite a few times. Mm-hmm. I've got them on the menu. I figured we'd be getting some of their customers. So we've got these great Iowa premium beef back ribs. Mm-hmm. They are literally the Flintstone ribs. I mean, these <laughs> things are monsters. I mean, you know, you're talking a bone that might be every bit of 12 inches long. So, you know, we've got that. And then we decided, let's take a shot at breakfast. And I think my thought process behind it was, once again, we're next to a Holiday Inn. Yeah. And, you know, are you going down for the Holiday Inn buffet? Or do you want to go get some barbecue? So what we created, and I mean, tacos are really hot right now. You'll yeah. find tacos everywhere all over the city of Chicago. It's invaded the city. So we, we took that idea and we're actually you come in and you get to pick your choice between a flour tortilla or a corn tortilla. You base it with scrambled eggs and then you get to top it with different types of smoked meats. We're doing the andouille sausage. We're doing it with brisket. We're doing I bet it the andouille with sausage is perfect. Killer. Food killer we also brought in chorizo because i mean who doesn't like chorizo and eggs Mm -hmm. and uh, then you get to top it with all the toppings that we have in the restaurant so that's black beans it's avocado it's sour cream we brought in a tomatilla sauce a salsa Mm -hmm. cheddar cheese i mean and the list just goes on and on and on would you ever play around with the rib tips rib tips on your menu you know it's funny that you said that we've got one restaurant they, they stand in line and go nuts for rib tips and that's in oak brook Really? For some reason, Oak Brook, the residents, demanded them. We are going through every weekend 300 pounds of rib tips. Every single weekend. In Oak so Brook. you will come out there. We run them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. We're doing over 100 pounds a day, and we can't keep them in stock. It's a Chicago thing. It's a Chicago thing, but I'm kind of shocked by it, too. You know, it's interesting as you go to different demographics and different socioeconomic suburban locations, every store has got a different profile. Sure. I mean, what do you think we're selling the most here? I our, number one's, our number one meat, put it that way. I would guess brisket. Brisket is it, bingo. You know, and it's kind of wild because on a lot of our restaurants, it's like half and half. Here, we are only making about six or eight pork shoulders a day, and we're putting in 30 to 40 briskets every day. And, you know, the other stores, like up in Vernon Hills or Vernon Hogs, <laughs> we might make 60 brisket up there, but we're making 40 pork shoulders. You know what I mean? And we're running out. So it's very different. So, you know, when you say Oak Brook, you know, Oak Brook selling rib tips, but none of the other stores, when we've tried to run them, we can't sell them anywhere else. So, I mean, it's kind of wild. You know, I mean, every store's got its own little idiosyncrasies, and I think you just got to be able to identify it, work with it, and kind of manage everything by historical data. And, you know, because, you know, it's not like having a sandwich shop that once you're out of roast beef or turkey, you can't run to the restaurant depots of the world and get more brisket turkey you know what i mean yeah our stuff is slow smoke so when we're out of brisket we're out of brisket you know when we're out of pork shoulders we're out of pork shoulders so you know we really got to tune in to keep it fresh what are you going to smoke each day it's a, it's a big guessing game on certain parts what you just said is one of those business lessons i mean in radio it said it a different way know your audience i mean it, that's how you succeed N- know who your consumer is correct never never make assumptions correct you know, I mean, it's tough, you know. I mean, you know, is it going to rain today? Is people going to come out and eat today? But, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And some of the older stores, you know, we've been in business now for seven years. We kind of know what we're doing, and, you know, we're doing a good job at it. And, I mean, our, our Vernon Hill store is our highest volume store, and, I mean, it's a great location. We're down the street from CDW and Granger and American Hotel Registry and yeah. some of the biggest companies out there, you know, all Fortune 500 companies, Aon, Hewitt, they're all out there right down the street from us. You can't get into the Vernon Hill store, and we are sending out catering jobs to every single one of those locations almost on a daily basis. So, you know, we can't smoke enough. We've actually had a lean on our commissary in Buffalo Grove to do additional smoking for us because we just don't have the capacity to be able to put out the volume that we need to, which is a good problem to have. So based on all that growth and based on the fact that you just opened this location in Skokie, I mean, how do you know when to slow down? Like, How do you know when you're being too aggressive or not aggressive enough? 
It, it's got to be kind of scary. Yeah, you know, it's scary. And, you know, when I, you know, lay my head down on the pillow, you know, we started off with 30 employees. We're pushing almost 200 Damn. now. And, you know, and a lot of people depend on us each day. So, I mean, you know, we've got to be well organized and make sure that we've balanced everything properly and we have, you know, the attractive plans to be able to employ people and mm-hmm. everything else. But, you know, right now we're still hot and people know us and we've built a brand. And, yeah. You know, in seven years, you know, you'll find us now, you know, in the grocery stores, as I mentioned earlier. But well, yeah, you didn't mention it on this podcast. Oh, OK. So, you know, we we it even goes back even further than that. So the president of Luminati's who came into the Vernon Hill store five years ago and he said to me, oh, my God, this is some of the best stuff we've ever had. <laughs> We've got a magazine called The Taste of Chicago, and there's another rib guy in there, and, you know, we want to put you in instead. And it was like an honor. I mean, you know. Yeah, so I it's like the, the marquee players in Chicago. I've seen that. It's, it, it's unbelievable. So we are in in with these six other people. I mm-hmm. mean, it's, you know, it's Garrett Popcorn, mm-hmm. Eli's Cheesecake, Vienna Hot Dogs, Portello's Italian Beef, Lumalnati's and Real Urban Barbecue. It's all the stuff you crave when you move out of town. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now what they're doing is they're sending out a million catalogs nationwide, and they're shipping our barbecue exclusively. So they're doing our brisket, our pork, our ribs, our mac and cheese, and our barbecue sauce. So all of a sudden, you know, I didn't know anything about bottling barbecue sauce. We had to go out and figure out how to bottle barbecue sauce. So once we had that barbecue sauce built in package for the Lou Malnati's catalog, Taste of Chicago, um, we said, okay, well, now we're sitting on all this barbecue sauce, so let's start knocking on the grocery stores. Yeah. So now we're in Jewels, we are in the Sunset Foods, Treasure Island, Standard Markets, I mean, all the local butcher shops, you know, Heinen's, and I mean, the list goes on and on. And I mean, it's just kind of crazy how, once again, it's a branding thing and People can find us not only, you know, at the restaurant, but in their local supermarkets. How often do you cook at home? Do you even have time to cook at home anymore? Not much anymore, you know, and I think the family misses it. Unfortunately, (laughs) there's not much in my house. You know, I've got two, you know, uh, teenagers. Well, actually, my daughter's 21. I've got an 18-year-old as well. But, um, you know, they're eating out a lot because there's not much. You know, maybe once a week we'll do a big meal at the house. But, you know, it's it's hard when you're in the restaurant 15 to 17 hours a day just to even go grocery shopping. Well, that was my next question. Like, what kind of hours do you keep? Are you? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're seven days a week. Uh-huh. You know, and, um, you know, I'm usually here early in the morning, and, you know, here we are 8 o'clock at night and still here. So, you know, they're 12 to 14-hour days every day. Wait, am I keeping you from your family? Is it me? Is it my fault? You know what? I'm actually thinking about picking up a pizza on the way home. and Well, you lose it right down Lincoln Avenue. Yeah, (laughs) you know, I mean, so... You know, but that's unfortunately, not not unfortunately, but that's kind of how it rolls. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Everybody's off kind of doing their own thing. And, yeah. uh, you know, we might, you know, it's funny, you know, I'll bring home a pizza and put half of it in the refrigerator. And then when I wake up in the morning, it's gone. So I know that they're still getting food. Well, I got to say, I, oh, I should, I want to try the, even though I know what they taste like, spoiler warning. I want to have dessert, some Dessert, right, yes. dessert. So the sweet potato casserole here with the marshmallows, which are now all melted. Which sweet, is, we call it sweet potato souffle, souffle, and I mean, once again, it's a very sweet product. I mean, we whip them with tons of heavy whipping cream and <laughs> butter, and and yes, we melt those marshmallows. We get we probably go through more mini marshmallows than anybody could ever imagine, and we bake them in the oven until the marshmallows get nice and golden brown, and it just kind of all goes together and finishes off the package. It's I, it's, it's good stuff. I usually do. Um, a meat entree when I go to Real Urban Barbecue, which comes with two sides. I almost always order an extra side because I always have to get the sweet potato. Usually I get Brussels sprouts, but I always want to try something else. I can never eat all of it, but I always get a third side, which is usually spinach or the uh, mac and cheese. Well, it depends if you're taking it home in the car or if you're eating no, usually in the I'm restaurant. All, all, up until you came to Skokie, I'd been eating in the restaurant at Highland Park. Okay, because I was going to say a lot of people will take that extra side on the way home with them in the car. And, you know, that that side might not get home, if you know what <laughs> right. I'm saying. Kind of like, you know, the appetizer prior to the festive meal. These sweet potatoes, to this day, still bring great joy to my heart. They're good stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. These are so good. You are doing an amazing service to the food-loving community here. This is, uh, wow. 
you know, and if I could just say, you know, we're, we're our, I mean, like this weekend, we're going to be up at Country Thunder. Mm, perfect. We are the official barbecue of Country Thunder. We have been there now for, we're going on our fourth year. I mean. What a great fit. We are going to have a 53-foot semi-tractor trailer out there filled with food, smokers, everything you can possibly imagine. Incoming call. All right, I, I apologize in advance for this. This is my son, and I think he knows you're in my car. Hi, Noah. Hello. Uh, Noah, I'm sitting here with Jeff Shapiro, the owner of Real Urban Barbecue. Why are you calling? Because I want some pulled pork. <laughs> well, I have some extra. I'll bring some home for you, okay? Okay. Bye. He calls me whenever I record this podcast. He knows exactly where I'm going. If I'm going to a, ta- to a hot taco place, can you bring home some tacos if so, I'm going for hot So sauce? it's the GPS. He's got you all <laughs> dialed in on the phone. Oh, no. He knows where you're at. No, he knows. Every morning he'll say, well, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm recording Carco and Carney. Where are you going? <laughs> it's Smart he, kid. How old is he? He's 15, and he plays baseball. And he, summer ball, he's playing baseball six nights a week, sometimes doubleheaders. He's hungry. He, he never stops eating. He yeah, never yeah. stops eating. I mean, it, I've got an 18 year old like that. It's unbelievable. I, it's crazy. And when I say he never stops eating, it's not like he's eating fruits and vegetables. He never stops eating just crazily unhealthy food, and he never gains a pound. Like this. Trust uh-huh. me. I've, I've got the same situation in my house. I know it well. It drives me insane. All right. So, again, the address of this, the brand new Skokie location, which is lovely 5238 Tui. Uh, I. I'm a regular customer. I cannot recommend your food enough. I'm so glad you got to hang out and uh, great. Talk we had barbecue. a great. We had a great time in the car, and we got it all in here, and it fits perfectly. And uh, we probably could even got more in here. It probably, but you got to got to be careful. Got to be careful. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on the podcast today, and we had a great time talking with you. And hopefully, we'll do it again soon. Hell yes. All right. It is Carcon Carne, sponsored by the fine folks at Boost Mobile. If you like this podcast, please, by all means, tell a friend.